Firstly, I'd like to say thank you for joining me. And this is the first post for my new channel called Historically Speaking. And I just kind of wanted to um, uh, start with an explainer about, you know, what I tend to do with this and hopefully where it goes. Um, I felt compelled recently based upon the last year or so, really going further back than, than that, but the, really the last year has um, instilled a sort of a sense of urgency in me, and I probably would think that um, a lot of you out there feel the same way, that uh, society is being pushed in a direction that not really, not really keen on. Uh, there's, there's a lot of parallels uh, to what has happened in the past um, with the Soviet Union, China, also Germany, among others. Um, and I thought that it would be a good idea for me to um, contribute somehow to someone's knowledge base out there, um, anyone. Uh, if I reach one person with it that changes their mind or gets them to think about uh, history and society and uh, where we're heading, um, and I feel like it would be a success. Um, so I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that. And uh, what I'm going to be doing with this is basically I'm going to be reading books to you. Uh, they're books that I find interesting, um, that are relevant to uh, everything that's going on today. And I hope to read some articles, news items, white papers, really whatever I feel will kind of fit into the context um, and the puzzle that I'm trying to put together um, to kind of create a full picture or understanding as I see it um, uh, in regards to the happenings of uh, 21st century society. Uh, 2021 um, is going to be a crazy year, 2020 was probably the craziest year of all of our lives. And um, I just hope that, you know, I can reach somebody out there, uh, start a dialogue, maybe create a community, ideally, of like-minded individuals, um, because that's the way forward. We have to find each other, learn from each other, not hate on each other, and try and um, make sense of what's going on in society these days, because it's it's not good, my friends, and, and and I know you're out there. I know that you know what I'm talking about, um, and I am going to get started with it. Um, the first book that I want to read, um, and, and just so you know, uh, most everything that I'm going to read is either in the public domain um, or I'll just read snippets of something. I, I don't really intend on reading copyrighted materials uh, in full um, maybe just a little bit here and there for context, but uh, if I do read a full book, it's going to be something that's in the public domain so that I'm not violating anyone else's rights in that regard. Um, and if I am and you feel that I am, please do reach out to me. I um, am not doing it intentionally. I'm just trying to share uh, some knowledge with, with everyone. Um, but I'd be happy to address that or take anything down if it is actually a, a violation of, uh, of copyright or, or somebody has a claim on that. Um, with that said, um, the first book that I chose is called Rockefeller Medicine Men. You may have heard, heard of this, uh, maybe not. It's, it's not real well known, but um, uh, the subtitle is, uh, let's see, I have it here in front of me, Rockefeller Medicine Men. Medicine and Capitalism in America. It's by E. Richard Brown. Um, before I kind of get into the introduction, I wanted to give you a little background on, on Richard Brown. Um, he actually passed away, I believe, in 2012. But um, he is a uh, founding director of the UCLA Center for Public Policy Research. Um, he pioneered the collection and wide dissemination of health survey data to public policy and was leading advocate for health care reform. Um, he was 70 when he died. And I'm reading from his obituary, actually, uh, from the L.A. Times. Um, Brown, who lived in Santa Monica, died April 20th. 
in a hospital in Lexington, Kentucky, where he suffered a stroke after moderating a panel at a conference on health communication. He was a professor in the Department of Health Services at UCLA Fielding School of Public Health. He founded the UCLA Center for Health Policy Research in, in 1994. Um, he's also a founder and principal investigator um, for the California Health Interview Survey, um, considered a premier service or a premier source of information about individual and household health statuses in California. Um, it, it's basically served as a uh, model for health, health surveys for other states uh, since its impl implementation. Um, just a quote um, from one of his, his colleagues, and then um, I'll get started. Uh, the single thing that makes Rick stand out in this field is that he had an extraordinary capacity to use evidence about the public's health and strategize and advocate to turn that evidence into the best policy in action. Uh, that's a quote from Dr. Linda, Ro Linda Rosenstock, Dean of UCLA Fielding School of Health, uh, Public Health. Um, this book that he wrote is basically uh, his life's work. He took years and years of, of deep research uh, in the archives through the Rockefeller Foundation and uh, Carnegie Foundation um, and, and came up with a lot of uh, interesting knowledge that uh, isn't really common these days. We just kind of assume that the health system is the way it is, and it's always been that way, basically, you know, because it's pretty entrenched in in our lives, and um, it's become, uh, you know, one of the main uh, driving uh, factors in politics these days, and mainly because it's eating up so much of people's money, and coupled with the fact that as much as money as we pay for this healthcare system, we are uh, one of the sickest peoples on earth in the United States. Um, so something's not squaring there, uh, and in my opinion, it's laid at the heels of allopathic medicine, um, which is Western medicine, uh, which is the industry uh, that was created by uh, the Rockefeller Foundation and his contemporaries. Um, it, it just so happens that you know the basis of the medicine that was created happened to be oil. Uh, Rockefeller is known for his oil monopolies. Um, so he had a keen uh, business interest in this particular sector of society. And um, as you'll see, as I read through this, you, you'll see that uh, he, he did his best to set up essentially a, a monopoly from start to finish. And we're talking from the research that's employed, uh, the societal Praise that's you know being heaped on doctors that was also cultivated, um, and just the overall structure of the health system, the, the groundwork was laid in the um, in the 19th century uh, by the Rock Rockefeller Foundation and uh, Carnegie Foundation among others, which we'll get to. Um, one last thing I wanted to say is that I'm not a professional. I apologize if you know I get words wrong. A lot of these texts that I'm going to be reading are in the public do domain, so they've been essentially scanned to the Internet. So uh, there will be portions where, you know, I might mess up a word or I have to guess at a word because it's not necess necessarily written correctly or, um, within the book that I'm reading. Um, so please bear with me. I'm doing my best here. Um, I also apologize for the sound quality. I've got a mic on the way. Um, so hopefully uh, it will increase and um, I'll get better with my clarity and um, I'll try to keep uh, my commentary to a minimum as I'm reading. But sometimes I just have to I have to jump in and kind of give you my my context. Um, but what I'm, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to I'm going to be reading uh, Rockefeller Medicine Men. It is uh, quite a tome. Um, I believe it was released in 19. Let's see. I want to say 1979 was when it was re released. Um, I actually have it right here. Thank you for bearing with me. Yes, 1979 was when it was originally published. And you can find it on Amazon. You can get it um, on archive.org where I found it as well, where it is free. And you can get it on a, a Kindle. Um, and I will 
see if I can uh, leave some links for you guys on everything that I do speak about um, or read from uh, so that you can check it out yourself. And also, um, if you do like this, please do subscribe to the channel and comment on any potential text that you think that would be worth diving into to share with the public. Um, and also, any criticism is welcome. Um, I'm certainly welcome to engage in the discourse with anybody out there as long as it's in good faith. So, uh, once again, I, I do thank you and I appreciate you. Um, and I hope that uh, we can all learn something uh, through this exercise that I'm employing here, trying to reach out to the world and um, find some individuals who have a love of history like myself and have the general sense that something isn't right these days and we need to do something about it. And I think the first step is finding each other and then sharing knowledge.